Then we have the rest are zeros. Now those aren't all necessarily zeros. I don't use them. There are, you read the documentation, there are other things, but I don't use them myself. And holy crap. Yeah, it doesn't work because the projector sized it differently, so I can't do page down. So, all right. Mode set two. Have that be one. Set it to Genesis. This is for backward compatibility with the master system. Just have it set to one. Pal, have it set to one. This is inverse. I should have wrote pal first, but one equals NTSC. Uh, you can use NTSC. You can use those defines for that. DMA enable. Do you want to do DMA? Set it to one because you might accidentally write to the VDP uh, addresses to start DMA. That happens a lot because the documentation for writing to those really stinks and it's almost trial and error uh, when you start to do it. So vertical interrupts enable, show display. The first one generated the scan line. This one just blanks the display. Vertical interrupt still goes, still pretends like everything is going fine. You just don't see anything. With the first one, with mode set one, turns everything off. Uh, set it to one, backward compatibility. Name table. Scroll a base. It's kind of a long define. I want to shorten these up in the future. Um, if a register, it's associated with these bits in a 16-bit uh, vector. That vector, uh, the VDP guy that I showed you with the VRAM and all the associated areas, that vector uh, represents where in memory that is going to be. So this is scroll a base. Where do you want that in memory? You can only have it in memory where these bits are valid. You can't have anything below that, so you can have you can't have a fine linear wherever the fuck you want. Uh, but you scroll A, that macro, and put in an address as you would, and it will convert it to that. Name table window, same thing. Pretty much the same thing. This one. It's mapped a little bit different, so if you want to do it yourself, just keep in mind that it's mapped a little bit different. And again, that's scroll B address. And I'm going to come to me at 9. I haven't burned the CDs yet, but I'll burn everything that I have up here, the demonstrations and everything on a CD, so including the slides and everything. And the video. Okay, sprite address, uh, attribute base. Same thing. I'll get into the sprite attribute, attribute base a little bit later. What that area of memory represents Background color, one of 64 colors. You have 64 colors. You have four palettes of 16. Each sprite can have 16 colors, but each sprite can be selected from one of those palettes. So you don't have true 64-bit color throughout the entire screen at a pixel per pixel level. It's an eight pixel per eight pixel level. Um, and you don't have 16 colors either because color zero is uh, transparent. There's a priority to how the, the Sega Genesis draws pixels. And if it's transparent, it goes to the lower priority thing that needs to be drawn. I'll talk about that. I'll talk about that now. The priority is this. You have a background color. If everything's transparent, it goes to the background color. You have scroll B. If everything's transparent, it goes to scroll B. You have scroll A, it goes to scroll A. You have sprites, goes to sprites. And then you have another bit associated with each sprite called a priority. If that becomes one, then that is above all of these. So you can have plane B uh, with a priority of one that's over sprites, and so on and so forth. And that's how the priority works. If you read sega.doc, they have four pages devoted to displaying well, pictures, no, it's all crap. Just keep that in mind, and it's not that complex. H counter. Uh, it doesn't generate a vertical, a horizontal interrupt at every scan line. You can have it generate an interrupt at whatever scan line you want. You want it at 16 scan lines? Well, it can do it. You just write 16 there. And it generates the interrupt at every 16 scan lines if you want to do something every two sprites or something like that. Mode set three. This, these two bits uh, represent the size of 
the uh, H scroll, whether it can scroll every cell. The documentation says cell and everything. They mean sprite when they say sp sprite, so every eight pixels, or every line. And I didn't write a macro for, or a mask rather, for every, for the screen because that's zero. So zero is the screen. Same thing with the vertical, vertical scroll. You can do it by screen or two cell. That's one bit. You have two options. External interrupt, enable. There you go. Mode well, set four. Uh, the screen can be 40 or 32. Uh, my friend Lewis brought up a very interesting idea. My friend Lewis brought up a very interesting idea of emulating the Nintendo, the, a Nintendo on the Sega Genesis, which is kind of cool because it can be 32. It, the sizes work out. A lot of stuff works out, so maybe you could. But it could be 40 cells by 32 cells. And I'm going to skip the rest because I'm running a little bit low on my section. So that's pretty much it. Let's see what we talk about next. I'm going to go to one of my tools. This is a sprite editor. And it might be full screen with this resolution, so that's good. Let's go mega. There we are. Uh, it's kind of neat. I had a lot of fun with the GUI. There's a, you can do drop shadows and stuff like that. And I wrote a library for the GUI, so I don't know if you can see the drop shadows, but they're there. And if anyone wants to write me documentation, I would be your best friend forever. Because the documentation just says, fuck this, I don't want to do this at the end. So that would be, that would be very, very helpful. These are the 64 colors. Let's set up a color. This will be green. We'll draw a line. And you can treat it like a frame buffer. You can select what you're drawing on. This is scroll A, and it draws the patterns for you. This is a representation of the VRAM. And patterns are a special thing in VRAM that just starts at zero. That doesn't have a vector associated with it. The patterns just start at zero. That way you can reference them just with the number as opposed to a number and a vector uh, with different things. All sorts of other information. Uh, let's save this. So you can save it in a number of ways. I'm going to save it just as a VRAM binary, and I'm going to save that in temp VRAM. Okay, temp VRAM. And we'll go to VRAM. Uh, shoot. Let me look at that uh, for a second here. And this is a cool thing. If you have VRAM dumps uh, from emulators or anything that, like that, you can just load it directly. So you can load up Sonic the Hedgehog, and it'll show it per pixel. I just want to see how long this is, because we're going to write a program for it. It's uh, to A. So that's sprites all go to A, and we're using it defaults to scroll A is at C000. So let me dump those out of the VRAM using our friend DD. And I believe that was AA, was it? No, A00. Pretty sure. A00? Yeah. Sweet. Okay, thank you. All right, that's the patterns. Uh, now, E00, for a quick reference, is the size of 64 by 64 sprites uh, scroll data. So just, you'll use that a lot if you're dumping things. Um, skip. I've had a problem where I can't type when people are looking at my keyboard. It's kind of weird. So I won't bear with me. All right, so that's that. I'm going um, to run length and code them because I have a run length decoder in the library and I just want to use that because it's quick. So pat to pat dot rle. Oh, fuck, I overwrote scroll. So let's write that again. Okay, so there's these, those two things. I have a little Perl program uh, to convert those to headers. Uh, constant u8, pat, pat.rle to uh, data.header. Same thing with scroll. Okay, uh, 
for this. Uh, other person?